and loving master we honor you and we worship you on this day we ask father that all praise that we render unto you that you would receive it and father we pray that you would prepare us for worship today I pray father for a renewed mind and a strengthened heart and I pray, pray father that we give all that we have for your glory and for your honor. And Father, I pray that you would clean us up and make us whole. I pray, Father, that you would guide our steps, meaning that you would guide our thoughts and our actions in the very part of our being. And Father, I just pray now that you would take full control. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and guide us in all truth. Walk us through your word, Father, and show us where we are and where we need to be. And Father, would you usher down mercy and grace upon us? For we all know that we've sinned and come short of thy glory. So we humble ourselves before you and ask for forgiveness and for a cleansing. And Father, I pray that you would make us a better people and not a bitter people. I pray, Father God, that we learn how to walk in your ways. 
while we travel through this land which is not our home. And lead us, Father, to the more excellent way of life. And Father, again, we give you praises of glory. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise that we can offer you. But Father, I ask that you would receive it. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. I just thought I'd say these few things because the Deke has said on today that, um, that we seem like we're a little sleepy today. But he woke you up this morning. Amen. We're going to touch on that a little bit today. I'm, I'm going to give you my subject even before I read the scripture today. Subject on the day is no sleeping on the job. No sleeping on the job. And even before I preach it, I want to know what is causing you to go to sleep. Are you tired? Are you sick? Are you heavily medicated with the affairs of this life? All those things will put you to sleep. But I know the spirit of the Lord will wake you up. If you don't believe me, just think about it. Think about what he's done for you. It'll put running in your feet, clapping in your hands, and a joy in your heart that's unspeakable. But we're going to look at two verses today. First verse I want to look at is in the uh, book of Luke, chapter 21. <clears throat> Luke, uh, chapter 21, verses 34 through 38. Luke 21, verse uh, Verses 34 through 38 reads like this. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For like a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. And in the, day, and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all, and all the people came early in the morning to him and in the temple to hear him. Now, if you will, would you turn your Bibles to, I believe it's Mark, the book of Mark. And we're going to look at chapter 13, 32 through 36. It's the same reading, it's just uh, by the writing of, it's by another writing. Amen. <clears throat> This may give us some clarity on the first previous scripture read. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Know not the angels who are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray. For you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is like a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore. You know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Amen. And again, I want to tell you, no sleeping on the job. No sleeping on the job. Scripture is letting us know that there is an occasion that we, or a situation that we can fall into to where we might just miss out on some things of life. The Bible says here that no man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. But yet and still he says, watch ye therefore. And in this watching, 
I like to say there is some participation. Right. He's telling us not to go to sleep on the job. He's telling us to be aware of the soon coming of our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But it baffled me when I read the scripture because there were so many other scriptures that, that, that came into play or came into my mind. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought about things where he said, we don't know when he's going to return, right, right. when he's going to appear. But yet and still, he says, watch. And I'm asking, Father, what are we watching for? And, I, and who can I ask to get the information that I'm watching for? Because the scripture says that the angels don't know. Even the son doesn't know what the father is going to decide that the time has come. So preacher, what are we watching for? What's the reason for us to be watching? The reason God, I believe, is asking us to watch is because he wants us to be ready. Got a young preacher here that says it all the time. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. He's not asking us to watch and sit in anticipation of his coming. When I say he is asking us to be ready, he's asking us to prepare for his return. And in preparing for Christ's return means that we ought to be getting our house in order for the soon coming of the Lord. Because when he returns, he's returning for us all. Mm -hmm. And I know some people teach that he's coming for his saints, which is true, uh -huh. but he's also coming for those that are not his saints. Talk to Talk. Because we all have to go before the Father. Yes, sir. He says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. And whether you have believed him or you have not believed him, you're going to get a chance to see. So I'm admonishing everybody to get your house in order because when the return comes, you want to be ready and you want to have everything in order so that you can be and in, in, in anticipation of his return yep, yep, yep. and not in agony of his return mm -hmm. because those that have not accepted him now you've got to go before the judgment yep, yep. and you're going to get your just reward you're going to get your reward of unfaithfulness and, and unrighteousness now you're going to find out that Satan was a deceiver but you fail for his gain. And then as a believer, we're going to be in great anticipation of the return of Christ. Because now we get a chance to see the one who has loved us unconditionally. Now we're going to get a chance to see the one who rained down grace and mercy upon us. And, and in order to be that person, you've got to watch and pray. When we learn to watch and pray, and, and, and Luke says it like this, that being overcharged with suffering. Don't, don't be overcharged with suffering. And then he's talking about drunkenness as well. And, uh -huh. and right now, we're not, talking about, we're not talking about alcohol right now. We're talking about an overindulgence of the ways of the world. Come on, come on, come on. That's good. He's teaching us now and, and, and letting us know that this suffering means to be in excess of it and, and being, being caught up with trying to obtain more than you really need. And as believers, this suffering means that we should not get caught up and entangled with the affairs of this world. This world is not our home. We're strangers just traveling through. Sometimes we as believers forget to watch when we overindulge in the things of this world. Amen. And don't you know what he's trying to tell you? Even from a, a, a natural standpoint, it gives the idea of don't overindulge in food uh -huh. and drinking. 
Because let's look at what happens to the body when you overindulge in these things. We know that God gives us unmercifully, I mean mercifully, and gives us in abundance. But we ought not to overdo it. Because when you eat too much, what happens to you? You get sleepy. And it wasn't me, but it was the scripture says, don't go to sleep now. you got to watch and you've got to wait. What happens when you drink too much in, adult, in, in indulging too much and in excess? You get sleepy, you get tired, and you make yourself sick. And that's what this scripture is teaching us today with the affairs of this life. Don't get caught up with trying to get all, all the, get, and do all this traveling you know, on vacation and, and trying to overindulge in having houses that you live in and rent houses and, and trying to have all these cars and the finer things in life. It's all right to have it. Just don't let it have you. That's what he's talking about here. And when you get all of these things, don't you know the more of this world that you have, the less church you will attend? Don't you know you can't make Bible study if I got to go check on all of my property? I've got to go and find out and catch these folks that I've lent all this money to. I know where they hang out on Sundays because they was up all Saturday. So Sunday morning, I can't go to church because I know he's going to be at home sleeping, trying to get rid of that hangover. So I better meet him there. Don't entangle yourselves with the affairs of this world. It's all a trick of Satan. And then again, I might as well touch on the alcoholism. Don't overindulge. Don't get yourself caught up in that. And, and when I talk about over and duds, I'm not just talking about don't drink a little or a lot. Sometimes you ought not drink at all. Bible lets you know, lets you, let, let you know that in the old times they use it for infirmities of the body. And I know we always say now, well, I feel a little cold coming on now, so I need some hot toddy. It was an Old Testament practice as well. See, they didn't have the pills and everything that we take for medication. So they, they were experimenting. And they were trying different things in life. That's why they were using alcohol for their frequent infirmities of the soul. And then also it says, give strong drink to the dying. So if you 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 gonna get caught up in all this alcoholism, either you ought to do it because you're dying, or realize that you're killing yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what this overindulgence will do to you. But let me bag up off of that. I didn't mean to go in that direction, but, but I'm doing my best to wake you up now because the Bible is telling you, you know, don't go to sleep. You ought not to go to sleep because you got a job to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it says, watch and pray. And you remember when Jesus went up to pray and he left the disciples. And what did the disciples do? The disciples went to sleep on him. And don't you know that if you can't pray down here, it's going to be difficult for you to praise in heaven. That's, again, what this scripture is trying to let us know. And, and I want to shout it to you, but I, I've got to say it to you in a still, quiet voice. Because it ain't my job to wake you up. If this word doesn't wake you up, it, 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 it's something going on in your life. But it's saying, oh, don't be one caught up in surfeiting and overindulgence. And the Christian is... Not always safe and secure in himself. And that's, again, what it, uh, that's another thing that happens to us when you overindulge. Uh -huh. You find yourself thinking, because I'm a Christian, uh -huh. I can lay back and be safe and secure. Because I know who Christ Jesus is. and He's got my name written in the Lamb's book of life. But really, is your name in the book? Because you just might find out that you didn't believe the way you believed, the way you thought you believed. So now you can, and if you're always sleeping, you, what I call comatose, you never wake up. 
You might better read, uh, thank this thing. You may need to check your heart. I can't say if you're going to heaven or not. That's a personal relationship between you and the Father. Only you know, and only the Father knows what you believe. But I can watch your actions and suggest to you, you might better check yourself. If you're always in a coma, and then you're always caught up with having things, and you find out that things have you. This is simple preaching. But this is a self-examining preaching. I'm interested in you examining yourself. And then I'm going to also give you an escape. Go, don't say you're asleep. Do like everybody else. Say you're daydreaming. <laughs> and while you're daydreaming, I suggest that you meditate on your relationship and your fellowship with Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. If you can sit and meditate with him and have a conversation with him and he can talk to you and you can identify with what he's saying to you, if it's an auction in your heart that says, I've got to move because my father has given me a choice. Now I know personally who my father is. But you have to be watchful and you have to be praying for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior. And now is the time now where everybody say the time is at hand. God is on his way. But you really know when, how you can tell when God is coming? Quit looking at what's going on in the world and start reading what's in the scripture. Because when I look at the world and what's going on in the chaos in the world today, I, I would imagine that God is going to come between now and tomorrow. Because every man has seemed to turn to wickedness and idolatry. But when I read his word, when I see apostasy going on now, and when I see it in the church, the Bible lets us know over in Matthew, that's just the beginning of the ending of time have not reached the last days as we say we're in the beginning of it and now we're at a time of great anticipation to see the soon coming of the Lord but let me also let you know something like this let you know this as well it says to live is Christ and to die is gain and what's going on in the heart of many of us as believers we just ready to go and see the master I'm even in that position now. When I look at what's going on in this world today, I have no joy from what this world has to offer anymore. It hurts me and it disgusts me to see mankind can't get along in fellowship. It tears up and destroys the heart of men. When I see killing for no apparent reason, and I see a government upon my head that has no compassion for me, has no freedom and liberty for me. I feel like I'm over in, the, I think, Solomon when it talks about the anguish that this world gives to me. It makes me want to go and see my father because I know that that's where true peace is. That's where anxiety will be raised up off of my head. And that's where love can reign free. But I know that I'm in a straight betwixt the two. And I must stay here until the Father says, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. And then when I come out of this state of depression, and we all face it as believers sometimes, Gets difficult to preach and tell people that Jesus hung, bled, and died for you. And men turn and walk away as if you're telling them a fable or a tale, but you try to let them know that that's the empty spot that needs to be filled in your life. It gets difficult sometimes. Now we have to, how do we stay focused? 
And these atrocities of life will put you to sleep and cause you to forget to watch and to pray. It'll discourage you. It'll make you turn from the master and bring anguish to your heart. But God is saying, watch and pray. What am I watching for? I, I'm watching for the master. Watching for the king of kings, the Lord of Lord. And why do I watch? I watch because my soul needs Jesus. I watch because it's the master, my creator, who's made in me a clean heart. And that's what watching could do for you to clean up your heart take you out of this state of depression and put you in a sound mind. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. And that's why I can continue to preach God's word because in humanity I fall short but every time I fall short the Holy Spirit will lift me up place my feet on solid ground and then he'll give something to be an oxygen in your heart. You can travel on just a little while longer. And every now and then, if you hold faithful to his word, you'll lead others to the saving knowledge of Christ. And every time you get a soul saved, you'll want it more and more. You want the you'll have the desire. That's what moves you. Anything that you do, it's the desire in it that gives you the passion to go on. And I have a desire to follow Christ Jesus. And that's why I can't sleep on the job. This world will give you a sleeping pill. But the Holy Spirit, it's a spirit that will raise you up. He said that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. There's a watching and a waiting for the great day of the Lord. And in that watching, we ought to be servants of the master. And, and I also see here in the scripture, it lets us know why we're working for the Lord. You know if you are working, you can't sleep on the job. A lot of time we're sleeping on the job because we're not working. We've sat down in idleness. And let's see how simple we can do these things. Walk up in church every Sunday and do nothing. You will sleep it off every time. And you've, now you've made the preacher a clock. You stand up and read the scripture, that means it's bedtime. And while he's preaching, it's rest time. And then when he closes up at the end, now the alarm has sounded. Sound the alarm, preacher. Call out the name of Jesus. Shout with a loud voice. And now that's the alarm. Wake up, everybody. But you've got to learn. That I cannot sit down in idleness. I've got to stand on the word of God. When I read scriptures, I always stand and go. Never sit and be complacent. Get up and go. Faith without works is what? Dead faith. Now we've gone from sleeping to death. That's what will happen to you when you sit down on Jesus. And if you have not heard, sit down and never accept him. And death will be your final resting place. But those that believe in him can sit with a loud voice with great encouragement. Oh, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? That's because I shall not sleep. God has made purpose into my life that I believe in him. I shall never sleep 
when I'm in Christ Jesus. I shall never die in regards to that. And when I say I won't sleep, I'm saying that I won't suffer an eternal damnation. I rest in him. And at he returns. Then shall he come back for me and the last trump shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. And when the dead in Christ shall rise, I grab my hallelujah bag on my side and, and I march towards Jesus. And now I'm headed to see the master. I'm headed to see my creator. Watching and praying. And I suggest you get in a hurry to do your praying. And I'm closing now. Get in a hurry with your prayer and be faithful in your watching because one day it'll all be over. And that's when we'll trade in our praying for some praises now. 